recording. Start streaming. Let's mute these mics. Fan and show Ruth Rob Berry, formerly of Blue Turtle Bistro. He's got a new gig coming up. We're gonna talk about that. Life. And whatever else we want. Oh, I always cut it too soon. There you are, Rob Barry. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks How are you for doing? coming in. It's been a while, man. And I was just saying to you, I don't know you that well. Uh, something about your face, though, man. When I met you at the bistro and what the food, you know, there's a there's one way to a man's heart, right? Through his, yeah, definitely through his stomach. And you, know, I just I don't know how to say it any more than. You're a witch in the kitchen, man. Your creativity <laughs> and then Thanks. your uh, your face is so kind. And then, you know, you're talking to you. I know you're in a business setting, so you want everyone to like you, but you're just instantly likable. And then I remember I referred Jacob Bergsma to you, maybe get some website mm -hmm. stuff done. And, you know, he's a guy that I got a fondness for too, just a, a good man, you know. And, and so, you know, I do enough of my bullshit monologue, political talk and, I've been really looking forward to this, and, I've, and this week I've got more people-focused interviews coming up, so I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a huge fan, and uh, I'm excited about what you got coming up, and I'm excited to hear your story, because I think a lot of people, it's like you're saying, well, what, am I, what do you want to talk to me for? I'm like, dude, well, come on. You've been through the ring in the last few years. We all have been recently with COVID, and... I know you're recently widowed, and that's, man, I can't even imagine. I was, I didn't know your wife, uh, but I was a customer of hers at uh, yeah. Massage for Health, is it called? Uh, Health and Body Works. Health and Body Works, and uh, we were just talking about Christy Mango. What an angel, just, you want deep tissue massage, or you got something ailing, yeah, she... She'll hurt you, yeah, but she'll, yeah. she'll work oh, it out. It's, it's really good. So just take a few minutes anyways, Rob. Again, appreciate your time to tell anyone that might not know who you are all about, where you came from, how you got to this point, where you're from. And just take a time, as much time as you need to talk about who Rob Barry is. I okay. Better. No pressure. Yeah, usually <laughs> I really don't like talking about myself too much. I really don't know where to start. Me like either. Like That's how far you show. go back, you know, like... <laughs> I only remember some things at two years old, but I really can't go. I can't go back anywhere beyond there. But yeah, it'll be inspirational, anyway. <laughs> no, well, I uh, I'll just start with with the food type thing. Is uh, I've been a uh, I, I've loved cooking for as long as I could possibly remember, uh, and sort of got into that with uh, my grandparents and like my grandmother always cooked. She made bread. She did everything really. She would What's try the nationality. To make... Uh, she was part German, but not like sort of, she wasn't didn't come over from Germany, but her, I think maybe her great grand or her grandparents did. So you're Canadian many generations. Then. Yeah, basically a hundred. Yeah. yeah. So there was really no German being spoken that I've ever heard. Or I don't even know if she knew how to speak German. <laughs> right. So I, I don't know, but it's, uh, but she just had this love of cooking. And I think for anybody who, uh, who has that love, there's, there's people who have that, the most important thing, which is their palate. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what, that's what sets dishes apart. You can have as much skill as you want, but if you don't have a palate or put the love into it, I, 
it's your best tool in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's just about creating something and sharing it, which which I think is a joy. Mm -hmm. So when you were talking about coming to the restaurant and uh, it's, I just want to have fun. And uh, the staff that I had there, they were there for, for a long time. Well, you had the same girls. I've never, usually in those type of places, you see a heavy rotation of talent on yeah. the floor as far as serving goes, but you, your girls were always the same to the point where I'd call and they go, yeah, Jim, I know the corner you want. <laughs> I'm like, it's all, I don't care where you put me, just don't put me in the middle or by, you know, by the door. I don't I like off to the corner or something like that. So yeah, I got eyes on it and make a reservation if you don't want to be disappointed. Yeah. And it just, and to me it was just, we had a ton of laughs every once in a while. You get a little, a little burr and you know, a little, you know, but it was short, very short lived and then back at it. And so, but it was lots of laughs, lots of laughs in a very family type environment when it comes to staff where, as I know their parents and chat with their parents and it's a, it's a really good, it's, it's a good vibe, mm-hmm. I guess. So are uh, you a St. Catharines guy? You've been here your whole life type of thing? Or? Yeah, I was born and raised in, well, born well, in St. Catharines at the General Hospital, which I'm sure everybody was yep. back in mm-hmm. the early 70s, uh, and raised at Thorold. Oh, okay. So then eventually left, uh, went out west, oh, got okay. my, went to school in Calgary uh, as an apprentice, and then just worked at a place called Emerald Lake Lodge out in the Rocky Did you go to school for culinary? I did, yeah. So just sort of did that and put my heart and soul into it. And eventually came back here, getting ready to travel somewhere else. And, uh, it just, I ended up getting a job and meeting a girl and staying here. Like, yeah, I used to call and I go, what's the place out on, um, is it Ontario street and Beanfield? They got a really good breakfast place in that, uh, strip plaza down a little Victoria Avenue. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's that place called? I always forget what it's called, yeah, but I know what you're talking about. Um, and I used to refer to your place as the Wellington Court of Breakfast. My cousin is <laughs> Eric Peacock, so, I mean, it's flattering for both of you, I think. But uh, Eric is just creative beyond measure and talented. Um, and then, you know, as you're talking, I'm I'm thinking of the last time somebody called me an artist. I'm like, an artist? Yeah, Jimmy, like, come on, you're a show host. You know, how's that any different from somebody that sings and gets on stage? I go, well, <laughs> let me tell you, anybody can do what I do. But I guess maybe not. But, you know, I used to call it the uh, the Wellington Court of Breakfast because it was just. And then as you're talking, I'm thinking, this is my self-expression. And it mm-hmm. means so much because if you swallow your truth or swallow your expression, it just manifests as disease, I believe. So getting it out there and with the idea that maybe somebody will be inspired by it. And then as you're talking, I'm thinking, this is your art. This is how you express yourself. This is how you give love to strangers is by putting yourself into your dishes and watching their face or, you know, the comments on the way out the door, which I imagine are mostly positive. Yeah, it's, uh, I think there's people who have a a need to create and I think everybody has it. Some people maybe have as a hobby and some people usually sometimes do it as a profession. And getting into business for me wasn't about hey, I'm going to make a lot of money because, in fact, the reality is you don't. <laughs> you usually put in, like, at least almost double the hours what other people are, and you're making less money. And But at the end of the day, there's something about creating, uh, something about having a vision and seeing that vision come to fruition and putting all the time and energy into it and trying to sit there and, and I don't think when, when I... Th- when you don't look at the sort of dollar value of things and you look at what you're creating and then you try to make that an experience mm. and you are fair with what you're charging, I think that's the ultimate recipe to make a success in something like that. Yeah, I think you're talking about working for someone else, but then uh, when you're the entrepreneur, there's some thin margins and food, lots of waste and you yeah. get a lot of overhead and stuff like that. This is not a get rich. You know, I mean, it takes you quite to get to a level where you're really doing well. I mean, you're going to have yeah. to be established for decades and have a clientele that, you know, you couldn't produce that type of clientele at the at the Blue Turtle. It's just not enough room to make a pr- – you could be packed all day and have right. steady seating, but you, you just – you can't possibly have the numbers to create a profit that you, you can, you know, be rich on. Right. The, the challenge with that was always, would I be able to hire somebody else to do what I do or – and to take a break from it? And the reality was – 
there's not enough meat left on the boat. Like it, it wouldn't be your profit is a wage almost. Well, yeah, there was no profit. Mm -hmm. Like it was, you make a wage and your wage is fluctuating. Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends how it comes, and then things just get thrown your way, and you got to deal with them. And you know, like it's just the way things are. Cost of so goods what happened? What happened with the blue turtle? Was it just like life took over with your wife's sickness and stuff like that? Is that why you, you mm -hmm. shut that down in the beginning? Or yeah, it was. Uh, it was to shut it down and regroup, and I just couldn't regroup as quick as I wanted to. So I kept leasing the space. Um, before she passed, I don't like it was. I just wanted to spend time with her. Yeah. So, how long ago was it now? Uh, she passed away. December 20th, 2016. Wow, that long, eh? Yeah, it's still it just, just... flies by, man. Yeah, and you just look at it, and it's... It was 10 years for my mother. I swear it was yesterday we are hanging out sometimes. You know, sometimes it feels like 100 years. Sometimes it feels like yesterday, so... 100%. And the one thing I find is that those... uh You have a lot of emotions of joy when you look back on things, but sometimes you get those ones of hurt, mm -hmm. and that intensity never goes away. You know, that, that intensity of that sadness sometimes is, uh, it, it's there. Like it's, mm -hmm. it'll hit you at the weirdest times. Like I'm sure I'm driving down the road sometimes and I'll have an emotion hit me and all of a sudden I'm just gutted, just gutted bawling, drive down the road. And I'm like, I wonder what these people are thinking about looking yeah. at me right now. <laughs> this. I'm having a little emotional breakdown all by myself here. Yeah. You know, I know what you mean, man. I'm, I'm a long way from that now because I've never been much of a crier. Uh, but my mother just broke me, you know, for many reasons. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there was, you know, you feel like a, a weirdo, but you just be sitting at a light and out of nowhere, it just pours on you. You're like, 100%. Man, it's really difficult driving and crying at the same time. <laughs> you get kind of good at it after a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would have those emotions actually before she passed because you try yeah. these things creep in your head and you try to push it out as much as possible. Uh, you're... But the reality is, is you can try to push it out as much as possible. It's going it, to, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. You can't hold it back forever. No. So it was a matter of uh, spending time with her when you first closed it down because she was still I around, only, right? Or? I had a week. It was very sudden. Like not, she was trying different chemos and she was to try a new chemo on, uh, she passed away on the 20th, which I think was the day she was to start a new chemo. But it was just happened to be on Monday. She just like she woke up and she was very not very coherent and uh, just really wouldn't move and went to bed that night and she didn't wake up in the morning. Wow. So it was uh, I think it was she ended up contracting. Uh, well, she got diagnosed with cancer on May 10th in 2012, which was unfortunately her birthday. Uh, nice. Yeah, so it was, but it was, she, it was, it was a long fight and she was in remission for about eight months or so. Or, and I think just the amount of chemo and all the treatments just finally caught up and sort of. Yeah. My mother said she'd never take that shit. No, she watched, uh. Frank Prantera's father, Sam, go through that. And, uh, she was always of the opinion that quantity, not quality. Or quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. Like, and I remember having the conversation with her, like, it was almost selfish of the family to want to prolong this man's life so that they could spend more time with him. Meanwhile, right. he was in a miserable state. I'm, I don't know too much about Sam's, but that's kind of how we envisioned it or talked about it. I'm not saying, you know, anything about the family, but this is what we all go through. And, um, I remember bringing her back from, um, Dravinsky for one of her many treatments. They, they, they misdiagnosed her here in Niagara, right? They, right. Missed, they missed what cancer it was. It was in her lungs, but it wasn't the primary cancer. It started in her kidneys, and they completely missed it. So I don't know if she had different types of cancer, but whatever, as soon as they did, opened her up, then it, she had a, it went straight to her brain. She had 100 lesions on her brain. So she was getting radiation, cobalt or whatever, for her brain lesions. 
I remember coming back from Dravinsky, taking her for one of her things, and she looked at me, and she's like a little girl, she says to me. You know, it's weird to have your mother recess that far in fear, <laughs> you know, that she was like a little child. And I'm driving, and she looks at me, and she says, um, you agree with what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, ma, whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. And she looked at me, and this breaks my heart. She looks at me, and she says, well, if it's my only chance to live, well, I might as well take it. And I think that's how they get you. She took the oral chemo. Right. And it destroyed her. The blisters inside the mouth and hands and feet. And just, it was, it was disgusting the way she went down. And then we managed to get her into hospice. They were very, very generous there. And then I couldn't believe the level of care that those people provided there. It was, it was unreal. I remember telling one of the girls and then saying, hey, we just do what we do for our own parents, you know, and, and she died in her arms. It was strangely beautiful, you know, and as being the older brother, the oldest sibling, I was the one charged. Well, I just, I go into leadership mode when crisis hits. It's just how I'm wired. And, um. You know, we were waiting for Steffi to come home. She was my ex-girlfriend at the time, former fiance. And she was hanging on. And I remember lying my ass off to her on her deathbed saying, Steffi's home. Don't worry about it. You know, all the estate's been taken care of. We've transferred all the time. And none of that had been done. I said, you, like, you can go. And she, she, she got coherent for a few minutes and... And after that, it was just like I'd given her permission to go. Yeah. And it's amazing how they hang on, man, because they th <laughs> they're hanging on because my son's here. Like, I'm not going to die in front of my son. And it's amazing how the human spirit will keep your heart going when nothing else is working, you know. But Absolutely. It was strangely to have your mother die in her arms. I don't know how it was beautiful, but it was a strange beauty too because she, she just gave up and she was gone and... And then life continues, you know, so. Yeah. Well, I'm sure during this COVID time when you get people who are passing away alone and stuff like that and can't be seen, like, I think that's the, that's the other side you don't want to go. Like when uh, my wife Adrian passed, it was, uh, I called everybody. So family, friends came over, uh, everyone got to say their goodbye. So when she didn't wake up in the morning, um, I don't think I actually called the the like the funeral home to come pick her up till around five, so there was a lot of people in the house, and uh, you know, it was good. Wow. It was really good. Yeah, and yeah, so that's... everyone got to see her, and everyone got to sort of bound together, and wow, you know, it was it was a good thing. And to me, that is that's, that's a, a powerful part. closure, right? It is. Yeah, and without that, I mean. You, we all know so many people, you know, I was just talking to a guy today, uh, his longtime friend, and he was talking about all well, the political division we all seem to be victim of these days, especially if you're on the right, you're a monster, you know, because you can't, you have to toe the party line, and he's like, even my grandmother, we got into it over Israel, and she had this thing, and she, you know, it's like we were talking about earlier, you have facts, and they have an opinion. You can't argue with somebody with an opinion if they won't take the facts, you know? And that's what he's saying. She died, and I didn't get a chance to say sorry for all the bullshit, even though she was as much to blame. Yeah, I'm putting words in his mouth, but yeah. And we forget, you know, I heard a horror story of, uh, of a guy that, you know, a, a guy in a home that took his life. He jumped out his window. He wrote a letter saying, you know, I haven't seen my family in six months. Forget this. And th those are the stories you don't hear. They're like, ah, oh, wear your mask, shut the economy down, no dining, right. no dining. Like they're ruining people's lives. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that the shutdown, the lockdown, and, and the effects on our mental health and our, you know, our leaning on drugs and alcohol right now are going to kill far more p people than this disease will. But it's a, it's a strange time right now, man. Uh, yeah, we very seldom hear the horror stories, the, the one a guy jumping on his window and stuff yeah. like that, or, or the suicides. You know, they just the news doesn't talk about them, right? Or the drug addiction, or the lack of mental health, or something. So it's it's strange times, and um, 
You know, I don't know why I was looking forward to this interview so much because in these strange times, I want to find some hope. You know, Probably here's so. a guy that, like, fuck, he got a young kid. Well, not young. He's 13 years old now, so. But, yeah, he, he was young, too young to lose his mom. And you wonder, God, what the hell? What the hell did I do? <laughs> you know? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's the conversation. So after shutting down the, like, closing the turtle down right before she passed, I kept it shut down for a while. Uh, it, it, there's always choices to make. And for me, it's, I could have kept working and paid for extra care and passed my son off to a bunch of different people. But for something like that, um, because he was just nine turn of ten and it, i wanted to be there for any time he had an emotion i wanted to be the one right there mm -hmm. so you you either spend your time to make money or you spend money for time and that's mm -hmm. the unfortunately this world that's those are your two options mm -hmm. and uh it's i i chose i chose the latter and spend mm -hmm. money for time and uh it, to me it was the greatest decision and because we would talk and because he has his things and especially like to me christmas has always been a special time and it is for my son as well and seeing my wife pass away five days before christmas he still loves christmas but then you see all the movies and it's kids sitting with their mom it's everyone doing everything with their with their mom and there's a lot of that uh mother's day and it's just it's, he's a kid you know he's like why did she have to go and and I'm just like, we're just lucky to, to have known her. Yeah, and like, I was going to say, it's hard to, well, it's sometimes not so hard. Sometimes the beauty of something so tragic, like a death, you can't escape for some reason. You know, when I was with Steffi, her uncle Waldo uh, Mantini, uh, you know, Wellsprings, you know, his sister picked up on that as a cancer support center because there was nothing when Aldo was alive. You know, there was no support center. Yeah, you had to go to Hamilton for treatment and stuff like that, but there was no outreach or programs for people or family members that were suffering of the loss of them. And I was fortunate enough to be at Aldo's bed when he, I think it was in the hallway, the family was beside the bed, but it was, it was weirdly beautiful. Like, I mean, and he's, he was a real character and he's saying, you look after my angel and if you don't, I'll haunt you forever. So I hope you did a good job. I'm not haunted, but, uh, I mean, she's married and got a kid and all that kind of stuff. And she's, she's still my little girl to some extent. You know, I never talked to her, but um, it was a weirdly beautiful. And they're Ita all uh, very Italian. So the bond was so tight and stuff like that. And so sometimes you can't get away from the beauty and you think, well, this is weird. How can I find something so tragic, beautiful? But, you know, have you or or your son, what's your son's name? Riley. Riley. Is there any... You see any blessings or anything kind of silver linings that well, I can, um, I could, yeah, I know you'd trade everything to have her back, but like anything that, because I hear your positivity saying, I'm just glad to have known her and spent that time with her. Same with my mom. She died at 61. I feel a little ripped off, but you know, when you're eight, like I can't imagine not growing up bitter. You know? <laughs> the one thing I tell him and that, you know, like for myself as well is that, when someone dies it doesn't take their love away it's still there it's still something to draw from mm. it's not like the love just went they looked at you they they loved you mm. you you can't take that away yeah you can't take that away from your grandparents you can't take that away from anybody who's special in your life uh it is it, to me it's always a source of something to draw from it's like when uh i i like again i idolized my grandparents and my my grandfather's work ethic was like just so phenomenal and what the time he took to do something right i obviously do that in my mm -hmm. in my stuff and uh i still draw from that i still draw from the experience with him i still draw from from his strength like he went to the he went to world war ii he he came back and i and i sit there and I go you know what when things need to be done i'll draw from that and, and I think that when people are in your lives, they, they give you certain things. And I know that uh, I, I have a friend who was recently, he was teaching in Ecuador and he was on a mountain bike. He just went over the smallest hill and became a quadriplegic just like that. Wow. And so him and his family are now back here and he's here, but they were teaching and he has two young kids and they were like, 
friends of Adrian, like, you know, before I met her and wow. they were like, you know, how she, how she conducted herself and handled it with such positivity and strength and how she just wouldn't let anything beat her down. And she was still just a, a beaut. She's one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, and that's what it was a constant like <laughs> the contrast between you and her was a struggle all the time right well no not really that we had, we had different so we, we had different ways of doing things at the time but no it was just it was always awe inspiring for me but when he said like that's an inspiration for him and he he drew from that so he drew from knowing adrian and fighting with what he does so when he started going through his recovery he was like all right i got a bowl of cheerios for breakfast i'm just gonna tip it over and try to flip my cheerios over because i have some movement and then now he was able to do that with nuts and bolts and he had to retrain his body right he's a very smart guy anyways like with how your spine works and everything and sending you know messages through it and so he's still considered a quadriplegic, but he can use his hands, he can move his chair, and he can actually, like, we went to a friend's house and he actually rolled his chair up to the side, stood up, and just fell into the pool and, you know, was doing his exercises. So he's still has a long ways to go, but he he was fighting for it, right? He's like, okay, I still have some movement, I have some sensation, and he but he drew from that and i think everybody can and i think that's why when somebody goes through something people just being there i think is a lot of support and i think when you're overwhelmed with that you can always draw from that and we have such a huge support network with me and my son and uh so we're we're very lucky and like it's just the way it goes my wife's dad passed away two years before she did and sometimes universe just works in weird ways mm -hmm. like we were gonna get a dog and pick it up on december 23rd for our son but the litter we went to obviously like breeder or whatever and uh but the dog did not have the litter that they wanted to so we did not get a dog but like we still have a dog left over from the last litter which was born on September 11th, which was mine and my wife's anniversary. Well, what a weird day to have an anniversary. And we picked the dog up on sort of the second year death anniversary of her dad. So then my wife ended up passing away just over a month later, and that dog is like helping my son because he loves that thing so much, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's weird how it's just weird. Like sometimes mm -hmm. things like that happen, and I, I think. Sometimes we're pretty busy where we miss those little tiny, those little tiny things where things just happen for a reason. And you're like, why did it happen like that? And you got to take that as a, you got to take that as a win, as a little blessing. Because mm. it, it does help, right? So. Yeah, it's strange. I've only just started, you know, I've been fired a couple of times from, you know, gigs that I really liked, like the radio show, you know, I made fun of 610 of Grape and Wine. And, well, that did not go so well. Uh, it was one of my best segments though it was funny i was like when i listen to my last show on terrestrial radio i'm really proud of it i struggle with what i produce here for whatever reason uh it's a totally different animal though and then canceled from youtube start making some decent money canceled for no good reason crushed again you know yeah the station did something because i had a synergy i had you know the media credentials of the newsroom the three stations in one building it was i loved the whole experience of that radio business and i had a show at, at uh, chsc back in the day too and then i get canceled from youtube i'm like now what it was my only income pretty right. much i was selling real estate here and there and then i got fired from that you know, and that's like I said to you today, you know how hard it is to get fired from a broker in real estate? Like, they keep on the slugs no matter what they do, but yeah, you get political and you have a big mouth and you call people names. Yeah, sometimes people just don't want to be associated with you. But then, you know, I was given a little bit of hope by a friend of mine that built me the website that I'm working on so that I can broadcast without censorship. And just then I started going, ah. Oh. Like, even after I got fired from 610, I was like, well, if you want to be anyone in this field, you're going to have to get fired a few times. And I kept telling 610 when I was there, I'm like, I want you, 
uh, my goal is to be fired by you guys three times. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you know, I'll come back, you can fire me. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of a joke, but yeah, I started seeing it as, as uh, like a, a blessing. You know, I don't not compare myself to CERN, but he was fired from a bunch of gigs before he did anything good. Now he's an apologist, I think, for free speech. But uh, yeah, to, to look back at your blessings and go, oh, yeah. So God wanted me to go this through this for a reason. And oh, by the way, maybe stronger. And look at all these blessings that were built into it because sometimes you can't see them for years. You call it the universe. I, I say, God, whatever. Everyone's got their oversoul, whatever. But I think most people... The majority of people believe there's something after this life and that, you know, there's like a power that's bigger than us <laughs> that controls things somehow or, um, yeah. So how, how has, again, your son's name? Riley. Riley. So how have you, how have you kept him from spiraling downward in bitterness? Because it's so easy. You know, you lose your mom that gives you bragging rights to be angry. Like, I had mine for 61 years. I'm still angry that she's not around. I mean, I'm not taking it out on people, but, you know, I don't have a 8-year-old or 10-year-old's mind either. So how has he handled it, and how have you kept him on the straight and narrow? Because it's so easy for him to go, fucking, I'm on drugs. I'll start breaking into houses or, you know, and sometimes good parents are not. You just, you lose them. You know, so how have you kept him on the path? It, he's he was a good kid to begin with. Yeah, like so he's always lucky. had a big heart, so it wasn't like it, it, to. I don't know if there's any secret to it or whatever. For me, I just listen to him, and I try not to. There's there's a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. So even as a young kid, he he always he's really good. He knows not to lie. He knows that's like you know what if you do something, you, I'll tell you what you're not going to get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. But if you lie about it, like this isn't like you lose like a video game or a toy for a week or a day. Like I'm usually pretty hardcore. Even when he was young, it's like, if you, if you don't do this, then you're going to lose out for a month. I'm just going to go big right off the hop. So see what you do with it. Mm -hmm. So he's always been like, okay, I don't want to lose it for that. Long. <laughs> so he's always, so he's always been really good, but, uh, like I've never, we've never really had to worry about anything. So he's always been honest and, um, he's honest with his feelings and sometimes he clams up, but it's just allowing him when he's angry to be angry. So you're allowed to be angry. Just make sure you like, just, you also have to remember the good. And like, my goal is for, to take time off was to take time off and help him with this to, for us to really strengthen our communication and to try to give him a good clear line so that when he's in college or university, he's not sitting there drunk one night and comes is overwhelmed by an emotion of his mom and then he makes a mistake that he has to pay for. Mm -hmm. And so my goal is to try to just, and we talk about Adrian, like we talk about her and in, in such a positive light because she was such a positive person. So yeah. um, he, he knows the, the values of what his mom stood for and mm -hmm. he knows the value of what we stood for as a couple and he knows what I stand for. Mm -hmm. So and again we have a great support uh support network and a lot of friends and like just a lot of family so it's, it's So really tell good. me a little bit about her because like I said I was a customer of hers at the at the massage studio. Thank God for Christy. Christy I was with Christy before she went to your wife's place. Mm -hmm. Um but, uh, yeah, just tell me a little bit about Adrian and when you met her and, like, how you got rolling. And you, did you meet her in town here? Uh, yeah, I actually met her. Well, I saw her a couple times and would always try to, like, put up the vibe or something. She would see me. <laughs> put a vibe up. And, uh, which I don't think was really, I don't really think caught her eye. <laughs> <laughs> Never worked. So, right? right. So it was, uh, and so we met on July 1st, like, actual first time we talked and whatnot. So... Um, it's safe to horribly say that there was fireworks, but, um, <laughs> no, just, yeah, extremely like, that's like the yeah. worst you possibly get. I imagine. <laughs> so we just started dating and then, uh, I was always, I never, I never grew up with my dad. He left when I was two my brother was okay. six months old and my sister was like four. Okay. And so he was never a part of her life. 
and he worked at GM, lived in St. Catharines, but wanted nothing to do with us. And wow. for some reason, that, that really affected me, whereas, you oh, know, sure, like, man. I don't want to... You kind of feel abandoned a bit, right? Mm-hmm. Dude, there is there is effects from that. So I always looked at relationships and be like, I just want to do common law marriage because I don't ever want to get married. And I would try to push serious relationships off as much as possible. Phobia. Yeah, just get close, back away, get close, back away, which... And so I met my wife and that was kind of like that for a little bit. And then I was like, what am I doing? And 11 months after I met her, we were bought a house together. And then I wanted to marry her, so I was like, oh, I'm going to marry you. Like, <laughs> and then we just went through that. And then, wow. yeah, she would, she went to Western. She has a bachelor in science. And then she went and did massage therapy. And she's, uh, I guess what you would call a science nerd. She's was really smart, loved school. And I was the opposite where mm-hmm. I, well, I'm not going to say not smart, but I didn't really enjoy school. And I didn't put forth an effort. Mm-hmm. And our son rides right down the middle. He doesn't like cool. school, but he gets A's all the time. Wow. So it's like... It's like How about the businesses? Were you guys involved in each other's businesses or... Uh, yeah, she was my support. Like when I... I had left the Peninsula Ridge Winery after oh. uh, being the chef there. And I just didn't... I didn't like the politics of, of work. Really? Well, because I was like, I think we could be like we could be making money we could be doing more of this we should be more of that and i felt I, in my mind i was like if we keep doing this the doors aren't going to be open for a while like the, the structure has to change <laughs> oddly enough a year after i left the, or two years the doors closed and I, I could it's and so i was like i'm gonna go out on my own so I took a place that already had an exhaust hood where I didn't have to spend the money on that. I was able to get a liquor <laughs> <Number> license. <one. laughs> so it was, hey, if you're going to go into debt, like go into debt with the least amount of money and try your stuff out. And because of where it was, it the rent was fairly inexpensive. And for me, it was if it didn't work out as a restaurant, then I can just go do a catering thing and right. have a plan B and a plan C. Either it's, to me, it's risk or calculated risk. And I'd rather be calculated. So she was a huge support in that. She was always like, yeah, you got to go do it. You have to do it. And then when I was working late and not being home at much because her boy was only six months uh, six months old when like I had actually took over this lease, she would leave notes around the house. You're doing a good job. So I get home wow. at like 11 or 12. She'd be like, you're doing such a good job. Keep it up. We love you. And it was just so supportive. Wow. And that's what that's what I really was drawn to her about like when I first met her was she checked off all the boxes that I needed as a person like different boxes checked for different people but she was she was just a not like just a naturally genuine good person like she would never get angry she was which her being with me that's a necessity uh <clears throat> she got a sister <laughs> no, not <she's>, for you <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh no she was and so she was just very supportive and then she was actually at the massaging at the bugsy's plaza rate where uh dr ron fast was for right. her. and so she was the massage therapist for dr ron oh. fast and then when he left she was like, should I take over this lease? And I was like, I think you should. She and she's like, that. can I do this? And I was like, yeah. And then eventually, uh, after her cancer was in remission, uh, the place on Linwell Road became available. Uh, and it was one of those things where it was a doctor's office, so it was paint and move right in. Really? Because all the rooms were already there. Reception area was right. there. Everything was there. So again, so she's like, should we do this? It's like, oh, we should totally do this. And <laughs> it was, it was, it was a lateral move cost-wise overhead. Wow. So. And it, she had a detached building with parking and all that kind of right. stuff. Yeah, it was great. It's great location. And we just live right down the street. So. We oh, bought, do you? Yeah, we had moved, we had bought in Thorold. Huh? And then we had moved to St. Catharines and right to the, just close to the well south of lakeshore not well, really okay. the north north end but somewhat and uh yeah and then i purchased the the, the building on uh russell avenue which is now going to be the new place that i'm opening up was that uh multiple offers on that place when you bought it was it, was it the hot real estate market because i wonder if i know that place uh the one on russell ave yeah uh actually both places were pretty lucky no there was not a lot of offers on that one the linwell one we saw 
Adrian drove by and she saw the realtor hammering the sign into wow. the ground. She pulled over to the side of the road. She That's called how it's me supposed to happen. And I said, call him. <laughs> she called. He just left. He came right back. Yeah. We sat there. He talked to the oh. doctor. It was done in two seconds. Come on. Yeah. And it, the doctor was probably just happy to hear that it was going to another medical professional. Absolutely, yeah. I don't know, but it was just it was one of those things where it just works out. Like her lease was coming due, I think, 120 days at the sort of uh, Bugsy's Plaza there. And it, it, once, I think, within 90 days, they're like, okay, well, you have to renew for X amount of years. It's in the contract or whatever. Right. And I kept telling them, like, why don't you ask them what you want to rent for? And they're like, no, they said they have time. They have time. And I was like, well, it just worked out that way. And for Russell Avenue, the building was pretty dilapidated. It, it, was, a, it was a complete gut. Okay. So new roof. Uh, Are you handy with any of that stuff or you got good connects? Uh, some of the stuff I can do, some stuff I can't. Right. Like electrical, yeah, I can change like late fixtures and stuff like so that. So how much of the labor you figure you were taking on yourself? <clears throat> Half of it or? No, less than that. Okay. Just because some stuff I can't do. Yeah. But it was, uh, so these people had this place listed for, I think it was $125,000. Really? And I went and offered seven five. Just because it needed a new roof, it needed and how like, many the years ago was, was Roach. Uh, this would have been 2014. Okay, so you had it a while. So that was, yeah, so that was like September, and they just they said, Well, we'll go down 110. I said 85, like everything has to be replaced, everything, and you couldn't even use the doors, like, there was nothing mm. of use. Uh, it was take it down to the studs the insulation was like, knob and tube yeah and so they said no i walked away and then the following february after september really? they had it listed for 110 so i offered 85 <laughs> ruthless they came down to 100 and we settled on 90 wow. just because they wanted to finally get rid of it it was one of the toilets had busted in the bathroom because they didn't like they didn't, didn't turn off the, properly or yeah whatever. and it was it, it like it was complete gut mm -hmm. like it was it was not good so, so how much money you got in it now as far as improvements goes <clears throat> uh it, to me it was a fair price because uh you were just paying for the property and with oh, okay. what i've put into it i would say that with the 90 plus what i put into it it'd probably be around 220 230 which was probably around the going rate for a building back then of that quality that, yeah so and now it's it, double that yeah mm -hmm. but it was it, it was it was a fair market like i wasn't trying to rip them off no it was it was a dead and you did the right thing you walked away no hard feelings and yeah, then they I, came back and said okay it, you know you you feel guilty if you if you shake it from someone you, you make them take your deal under pressure because it might not come back again but they had their dance and then it didn't come back again and then six months later they're back coming back to you so it's that's where you got to do it. Yeah. But when then you don't feel your neck and go, no, because, you know, a guy like you or me, you take advantage of somebody on the price of their home and you're just like, oh, geez, I can't, I'm going to have a hard time sleeping tonight. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I ripped them off at some level. And, but that's the way it's supposed to happen. You know, you it's... walk away and you go, this is what it's worth me. <laughs> we can do a deal great. If not, see you later. And it's not cheap. The, the HVAC was 16000 the roof was seven two because it was really uh, it was tile on uh cedar shake like oh so the strip so they had to reboard everything mm -hmm. uh and then like 10 plus for electrical 10 wow. plus for plumbing like if over five for windows like three thousand for doors like this is all new everything yeah like you're just talking a whole new everything so this is a bungle yeah, honestly, it's just, uh, it's just, yeah, just. And you commercial zoning or legal non-conforming use? Oh, it was that? already commercial zoned. It was okay. an old Heinz appliance store. And then it was oh, a little problem? variety store. So, oh, and then there was a, there was a, the access to the basement was a walk down. Right. And the retaining wall was caved in. So how the city wanted it done, that was a $25,000 expenditure. Because the building's only 16 feet by 50. So to put stairs on the inside would be 
you're using a lot of square footage mm -hmm. so it was to go down on the outside which need to be replaced and that's code for that is big deal yeah so and if you don't have the excavators or no <clears throat> guys it, uh, it's big deal my buddy just did a walk out on his but he did most of the work himself like he poured the stairs literally himself type of thing so oh yeah like it's it, it it's a big deal it's the way it goes so but you can't really do anything about it so some people are like he got it for that and it's like yeah but it was a fair price yeah it was a fair especially price especially you had to put double what you bought it for in to oh, repair yeah. it to get it, it back to even regular use so it's it is what it is but so we'll tell us what it is <laughs> what's the name uh, i'm calling it the tangerine tortoise i'm kind of being lazy like now that's hilarious yeah <laughs> it's, it's same Blue logo Turtle. different color like I just 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 so, let's see let's go here display no camera we can go over here for a second here's a blue turtle logo okay <laughs> the tangerine tortoise yeah. okay so yes yeah, see a little bit lazy <laughs> like, a little bit lazy. put your energy into your food dude uh, i'm good with it you can yeah. just, you plagiarize yourself all you want i'm fine with it. <laughs> tangerine tortoise cool well, and the, what are you doing uh it's I'm, I'm calling it a neighborhood eatery but it's gonna be just familiar foods but done differently Okay, so, so all day? Uh, right now, I'm just going to, during COVID, it just makes sense to open up at, um, I might just do Wednesday to Saturday from 4 to 9. Okay, um, so a dinner place. Right, it'll be licensed, which is why I'm calling it a different name, which is actually a name that Adrian had picked out when we first were talking about it she's the, like for the new place yeah because we okay. i was gonna have two places and she was like what about the tangerine tortoise? i was like i kind of like it she's a little cheeky huh yeah so i was like i really like that and uh like we would just always talk about things and mm -hmm. yeah so and it was so no breakfast and lunch then you're going away from what your uh what you what the blue turtle was because right. you weren't open for lunch there at all were you you're closed uh i was there was lunch but it didn't make up it only made up maybe three to four percent of our actual business though well did you do a lunch or did you do breakfast still too uh we did we did lunch and sometimes it tried different things right like i had um i remember one time we had five or six lunch items on there oh. but again people would just come in and not order it so it's like why am i having this and working on all the prep and mm-hmm people just dictate what you do sometimes and breakfast was their thing so and there's a lot of breakfast spots right now like it's there's a lot of breakfast spots. yeah you don't want to be in competition with those guys now because it became a fashionable well there's a need for it people like mm -hmm. go to mirror well not very often but it's a 50 dollar breakfast man. like for two yeah like and worth it i guess if you but you know yeah you still gotta eat lunch <laughs> yeah and breakfast you know, is a different it, it's a breakfast different sort. used to be 6.95 plus coffee like right. you know, come on yeah and getting used to a 25 dollar breakfast or whatever it's it probably with hip or whatever was never that much at blue turtle but man that uh cost of good and you changed the way i ate breakfast oh good. like Thanks. lobster scrambled man i'm like the day I went off the menu, well, it didn't matter because you'd still make it for me. But I'm like, he's got, yeah. oh, he'll, he'll do it for you. He'll have a slight pork belly with it too, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Another thing. I never had pork belly before. So like, and then yeah. This place on Victoria Avenue, which I knew his name, another nice guy. I go in there, I'm like, he says, you know what you want? I go, yeah, where is it? Where's green eggs and ham? Oh, we took off the menu. I'm like, dude, like, that's the only thing I eat here. Like, well, I can't even do it for you because I don't get the it was specialty ham. You know, it was like, and uh, oh, that lobster scramble just nah, like nothing I've ever had before, man. And now, uh, what's her name? Does a pretty nice job of it as well. Yeah, she does a great job of it. Well, Maddie, yeah. yeah, Maddie does a good job. Yeah. She, she does really, she puts her heart into it. Yeah, and it's nice to see, you know, she birthed a place. I can't imagine how risky that was for her. I don't know what type of back and she had but you know she didn't look like a girl that you know was ready to lease a commercial spot and open her own restaurant but you know through your leadership and inspiration to put like and help like you assisted her a lot too i remember going there and she says oh yeah i took everything. all his yeah. colory and play settings and you see that over there yeah that's rob's i'm like yeah. oh wow like that just filled me up so much from the standpoint of like you didn't need to do that for her you know, like yeah. you want people to succeed. I, mm -hmm. I'm a strong believer in our in our community, and I see I see Niagara is different than other people see Niagara. Like I see every 
municipality fighting for whatever they're fighting for monetarily wise i i kind of believe in a a, a bigger picture of the a Niagara sort of tourism area. The wineries run one way, breweries run another. We have distilleries that are on their own. No one's combining these places. Mm. And everyone's sort of doing the same. There's a couple places that do things uniquely different, but they're not very many. So today I was actually painting the front door at the Russell Avenue property there, and the fellow came by and he said, what kind of food are you going to have? I was like, well, it's going to be familiar but different he's like where are you gonna have french fries i'm like there's no exhaust hoods so there's no deep fryer there's gonna be no french fries but i will have a potato something and he's like oh really and i was like it's it's i'm not going for convenience <laughs> like i'm, I'm not, it's not a fast food i'm not bro. doing what everybody else is gonna do like it's I, I see all these posts on facebook it's like who has who has the best chicken wings I don't know. They all get their chicken wings from the same place. And if they're hot, they use the same oil for their deep fryer and they use the same Frank's red hot sauce and use the same carrots and celery and the same craft blue cheese. I, <laughs> so I don't know who has the best wings. I don't know. Like, I can tell you it's fat, fat, fat Louis. I'm not little. Yeah. We go to fat Louis. Good a lot. wings there, man. Yeah, they do. They're big. And they're big. And I think that's the best part is I think the, if you go to a place with small wings, it's like, okay, they're a little dried out, but it's, uh, there's, there's just little subtle differences, right? Like people maybe brine their wings right beforehand yeah. and kept them juicy because how good is a chicken wing the next morning? Not good. It's dried out. It's it, so. So you brine it in sugar and salt for an hour or two before you deep fry them? Yeah. Like even yeah, overnight, I mean, that's 24 what we hours. The turkeys. Yeah. No, I don't do a turkey 100%. without 24 hours submersed in a brine. I mean, if you did the same with chicken wings, would you have juicier yeah, chicken wings? Yeah. So well, you can't cook the chicken wings in a plastic bag though. <laughs> that's how I'm doing my chicken now. I, I can't do a, a, a turkey without the bag. Like it's just so juicy taking that out of the bag. You gotta brown it up and do whatever, but yeah, I've become yeah. a huge fan of the bag. And that's the difference of things. So it's I mean, who has the best nachos? I don't know. <laughs> They're all using the same chips. They all have the same cheese on it. It's it, there's like okay, sour cream, salsa. You never get enough of it, so you always have to order more. <laughs> it's like it, it, to me, it's who's who's doing things di slightly different to mm -hmm. really that's familiar with people explode. but gets people to try something slightly different which is i guess what the blue turtle was doing for breakfast mm -hmm. was to make it the same as what people are experiencing but slightly different for example like an omelet a lot of omelet you go to these the 695 breakfast places it's a flat top you put an omelet it goes everywhere it's rubbery they roll it they throw it on your plate whereas i would do everything in a pan all my eggs were done in a single pan and the textural difference is 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 so far apart you've got thickness which means fluffiness which means yeah you're constantly moving your eggs in it before it has time to set you're constantly moving it and then it finally binds and then you put your stuff in and roll it over so mm -hmm. you're using the same amount of eggs and your omelet looks twice as big but your the mouthfeel going through it the texturally it's it's a lot different it's that not four as rubbery. cheese omelet used to do it. it's magnificent man but it was only that was four cheese bacon eggs like there would there was it's the same as everybody else is doing but the done. technique is done slightly different just to create a different overall experience texturally mm -hmm. so and then you get creative with the cheeses too which is way creamier than right. just a mozzarella off the shelf or whatever like that yeah what was there using that oh it was for those cheeses, it was Asiago, yeah. goat, aged cheddar, and brie. Brie, that's the so one. That's where the you, you know a brie when you feel it on your tongue, even if it's melted, you're like, ooh, that's sweet. Yes. Yeah, that's so, the brie that really set that thing off. So it's just doing those little tiny things differently that mm. set things apart, which is what I'll be doing at the new place. Cool. To make a short story as long as possible. But it's uh <laughs> just, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Gives me more time to insert commercials. So uh, a couple weeks, you figure? Yeah, I'm hoping for. Ooh, I've just because uh, you said a couple weeks here a couple weeks ago, so I don't want to end up in a couple weeks vortex. I'm a couple week, couple <laughs> weeks. I'm definitely opening up uh, next week yeah. after after Thanksgiving. Cool. Are you having a, a soft open can, for in, invited guests only type of thing? Or? Uh, I'm gonna just because of COVID, the the I was allowed 36 seats. Okay. Um, 
but with COVID, I now have some dividers and I'm doing 24, but that's four tables of four, four tables of two. So if I get a bunch of twos, it's 16 people. Okay. So for me, a soft opening would be, I think I can do it just where I don't have to really do a soft opening. I'll nice. just let people come and check it out. And you're going to have uh, beer and wine? Yeah. And maybe a couple cocktails. How about, uh, are you going to bring in any music or? The place is pretty small. Okay. Uh, again, it's only 760 square feet. It's so you're uh, just going to concentrate on the food and... for right now. Yeah. It'll hopefully have a good, uh, the interior is pretty good. It's got a good warm feeling to it. Nice. Cool. And what's, uh, what's the specialty going to be? Oh, that I don't know. No, that I don't know. You don't have a vision for this is going to be my, my anchor of the menu. Are you going to do steak? Uh, there'll be like, there's going to be like your beef lamb options. Like I'm really, I used to do these, uh, goat cheese and spinach soufflés. So okay. I'm, I'm really keen on doing that with uh, a lamb shoulder on it. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, the price margins are the same or the, the entree to be kind of in track with the blue turtle or pricing wise, or are you going to have to go up because you're going to. Uh, uh, go up just to the price of the, I keep my, my cost of goods at their, at their set percentage. Yeah. So it's just depends on how much the actual thing costs. I just got a cough here. So excuse me. <laughs> yeah. I get caught in mouth. <laughs> Like, especially when I'm talking like this, when I get nervous, it's just like. <laughs> You're not nervous. Like you don't seem nervous, are you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. Feel I should have like a you know what? I give you a prop, in my Rob, mouth. because you know what? I, I've been working on you, you know, a little bit. Like back in the day, I was. I wanted to bring you on six ten. You're like, no, no, I'm, I'm not that guy. I don't. That's not my thing. I like. You know, I have a hard time talking about myself. Yeah, and uh, so thanks for stepping outside of your comfort zone. And initially, I think you're like, what for what? Like, no, what's anybody want to hear me talk about? And you know, didn't take long before you're like, yeah, I could, I could get enthusiastic about this, you know, because you know, having fear and being scared and stuff like that, all just selfish feelings that we're just taking on for ourselves. We're not really present to like, wow. I could help someone, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just your story. And that, you know, I, I appreciate the humility of you saying, well, like who really cares about my story? I cared enough to, you know, because well, I you. don't know the whole story. Uh, you know, I didn't know Adrian. Uh, I, I may have met her here and there, but I wasn't, you know, I mean, I knew her business. Mm -hmm. You know, I certainly knew when she passed on and I, I you know, I was a, you know, a regular customer of yours. Um, and I just found, you know, like I, I knew kind of like what happened, but I, I don't know anybody that's even close enough to you to know, to say, oh yeah, he's doing all right or whatever. So I figure, well, come on the show. Like well, I can get caught up and you know, yeah. I've been finding myself, like you were one of several guests since the lockdown, you know, not because I wasn't having anyone in, just try and get anyone to leave the house, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, I've had a few and I've got, I'm, I've got interviews all week. I had to zoom yesterday. I've got to Jennifer Lynn coming in tomorrow. She's going to play three songs and talk oh, nice. about type of, yeah. And you know, she used to play at my church. So, so talented songwriter. And I don't, you know, I met for coffee the other day for the first time, but, or, you know, I just figured like, I'll get to know you here. And then people that are like, well, yeah, what's Rob been up to? You know, they don't have your phone number. And they just can't just call you up and say, right. hey, what's happening? So at the very least, you know, spend some time here. And, then, uh, you know, I don't know if it helps out any as far as promotions goes, but you can't get too much PR, uh, PR you know what I mean? So yeah, I hope that somebody comes in and says, hey, yeah, I saw you on Jimmy's show. Like, way to go. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have known type yeah. of thing because let's face it, we're horrible marketers, you know, when it comes down to, you're a chef. <laughs> yeah. you, you're a talented chef, and you know, I'm sure you got many other talents. But you know, uh, you know, promoting our own businesses is our 
our greatest strengths a lot of the time. So oh yeah, God. I just it's it's hard to see how you come off sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Like you like okay, well I'm just I'm just a guy, you know, mm -hmm. do goofy things like everybody else, right? Like mm -hmm. it's I find I find a lot of humor in a lot of things. There's a lot of things I don't say because maybe it's the funniest people just don't usually get it i always have a long-standing joke with friends that like, every time i say something i think is funny it's just crickets after like everyone's just staring at me and i'm like okay yeah I'm pretty much used <laughs> it's to on this. the delivery bro. yeah which, which i've always you gotta work on that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome yeah oh, so. cool man so uh so a couple what's the what's the date do you have a, a like a hard date I was hoping for, since everything shuts down on the Monday, I was hoping for Wednesday or Thursday, but I might just push for... I mean, everything's shutting down. Well, with, like, uh, Thanksgiving, like, on oh. Mondays, you can't go and grab food and stuff like that. So, it pushes things back a day, right? Oh, okay. So, if I was going to open up Wednesday, um, regularly, I'd be able to get my stuff on Monday, do my prep, what I got to do, but opening up for Wednesday after getting everything on Tuesday, because Monday's closed because of the holiday you can't really it, it puts a lot of pressure on it so mm -hmm. i'd rather just make sure i'm getting everything right how you set for staff oh good i have some i guess you're not bringing mad many back no she said she would work for <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah she's like oh because well, she's nights. closed at those hours anyways yeah she's, she's like i'd love to come and help you yeah yeah but we still cool. get together and we still talk like even with the other like that still would be cool to everyone. have a familiar face like maddie around because she was with you there and then you know started her own place and then you know that would be like coming home like yeah. if i walk you want familiarity even if you're going to a new shop like hey i know you <laughs> yeah well she's a taskmaster she's that, that's what really made the turtle really good as well as uh everybody adds something to everything like not only just like having great work ethics but just maddie just sets up things and accomplishes it what was the other girl's name was it the eileen eileen yeah you stay in touch with her she's gonna be in the new staff yeah we chat all the time yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she's, she's a solid girl. Yeah. It's everybody. Even uh, like even some of the cooks I have and just came back from BC. We were chatting and like, yeah, we're just always doing what whatever you can, right? Like, yeah. it's a it's, it's do, a good bond. You do a lot of mentoring behind the counter. Uh you probably don't see it as much as that. But I, I look mean, at anybody that's standing beside you's got to be grateful just for the opportunity to mentor with someone that's got talent and experience that you've got it's like anything some people have it some people don't and you you can you can't make people want to do it they have to want it from within so when i would talk to people be like this and i what do you think about that do i have to tell you mm. do you see it yourself mm. and there's times at the turtle where we would sit there i would just tell the girls or be like okay like food's gonna be 20 25 minutes coming out of here can you let the customers know right away because there's nothing worse than people oh yeah food getting upset yeah especially because you go to a eatery when you're hungry so you're already hangry I guess yeah they call it yeah and, and fine you know if you know right up front then you can make a, your own decision right well communication is integral in anything mm -hmm. for any company any relationship however communication is the key and if you can sit there and create good communication with your customers then they have an understanding and usually it wouldn't be 25 minutes it would just be a hump right it'd just be everything just combines you get log jam and then you get through it mm -hmm. but people like the staff took it good the apprentices took it well and they'd be like okay like you just i have to accept it from me like you have to want that and so they just they took it they're the ones who did it all i did was say something they're the ones who lived it so they're the mm -hmm. ones who who put the effort in for it cool. so it's just as much on their back as it is with maybe me just giving some tools you're gonna have a flexible menu like different things all the time and rotating stuff because at the blue turtle it's kind of and maddie's picked up in this tradition too you just put it up on the on the chalkboard and the chalkboard's different every time all i want to see was scramble lobster script ah <laughs> yeah i'll have to stay th this is a, a definitely a different um a different sort of way to look at it for me than what the turtle was okay because so a, lot a little of, bit more of a permanent menu well, i wasn't really getting a lot of um, business from surrounding homes okay so there was a large part of everyone sort of congregating there whereas i am such a community a, guy. A, a very large residential area mm -hmm. um 
and all sorts of like income earners within that area mm -hmm. uh that i i need to be able to be um sort of approachable from that side what but i'm so financial of it uh from people understanding what the food is oh and then which does have effects on financial aspect of it and then also being able to be creative enough to bring in some outside people who want to try something that maybe nobody else has mm. and so it's trying to but not having a big menu because it is a small space and trying to really figure it out so it's trying to come up with some staples and then maybe a rotating menu on the side of something so like a little half and half hmm. it's it's a whole different way to look at it so i'm just trying to wrap my head around it hmm. so we'll see what happens cool who's helping you out uh well i've got I've got a friend's son who actually is an airline pilot, lives two streets over. Nice. And is, since he's not flying, wow. he does have his smart serve. So he's going to come and serve for me because he's not, he needs a job right now. He mm -hmm. got laid off until they open back up. Um, so he's going to help out with serving. I should have everything in the kitchen done. I'm, I'm doing things a little differently. Whereas again, I don't have an exhaust hood or a deep fry and there's no open pan cooking. Wow. Yeah. So it's just using the new technology with ovens and, and things that uh, is what I'll be putting it out with. Really? Yeah. So it's a bit more, it's it's more prep, less execution. Really? But the food will be, there's there's no compromise. Wow. Yeah. So it's a whole different ball game. Wow. No open pan. I can't even imagine. Yeah. It saves everything. Get, yeah? Yeah. Well, because... You have to clean your hoods if, if uh, even if you're not a busy place, you have to clean them at least once a year. That's a thousand dollar expense. Uh, then you have to get your fire suppression system looked at twice a year, which is 150 bucks each time. So if you have a deep fryer, you're constantly changing oil, then you have a bin. It's, it's, there's so much to it. Really? And just then you're, for the fryers, eh? yeah, well, just because you need that exhaust hood, which is expensive. So mm -hmm. you can, spend your money on the exhaust hood and get really cheap equipment. Like you can get a six burner gas range for 1500 bucks. You can pick up a big deep fryer for a thousand dollars, but your hood is your main expense along with the fire suppression system. <laughs> Whereas this new system is like, you don't spend the money on the hood, but you're spending money on your cooking equipment. You got a website up for the new place yet? Not yet. Okay. I thought I had the domain already, but I don't know. You haven't even got the domain yet? Well, I thought I had it. <laughs> what, and I was like, happened? maybe that was master business license. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the, what? Uh, well, I don't know. I just, I, just, I thought I had it. I had, I had a couple things on GoDaddy and I just, I was like, where is that? So I just got to register it. And just oh, okay. Grab it. All right. Well, maybe you need to give uh, Bergsma a show. I don't know if he's taking on clients now with that kind of stuff, but I just saw him, uh, my son, the hurricane just played a play. Uh, you remember the old, uh, uh, Detroit, Detroit Motor Inn, London's Lane and Town Line Motor. Yeah. yeah. It used to be a strip club where Dan's had it for a while. And Ashak Morani owned it at one time. Me and Steve Petreca from the hideaway. Oh, we really? ran that one, one time. And uh, anyway, I didn't know where it was. I drove to the freaking drive in because it's called the drive. I don't know. They call it a drive in, but no, they did. They got an outdoor stage and just cars. Like they, they were actually coming by and saying, like, get back to your car in your car like you party in your car but then it's right. raining and it's my son the hurricane i need to jump up and down and dance right. you know roadways open for him and revive the rose and then revive the rose band from well and andrew colonico and then uh they open for the trues the next night but it broke wow. my heart because uh hurricanes like this is our last sadly this is our last show of the year well they would have had 50 shows this summer right you know if it wasn't for covid and that's how they make their living. Like, right. I mean, it, it broke my heart to hear that they're, you know, done for the year, but this has been a tough year for everyone, man. It's, uh, yeah, some people are having a hard go. Some businesses are flourishing. I, mm. I know that uh, Eileen, she works at a place that makes uh, hand sanitizer, and I think they grew from 150 staff to 400. And they, yeah. And so, uh, the, Dylan's? Distillery or yeah, and there's Dylan's doing their thing. Like it's there's there's people making a go of it through this, but there's people who who aren't. And the restaurants some people, are some people have been wiped out. 
You know, some Thank God we don't have up. riots to worry about, like in the states, man, because people are getting wiped out by riots. I was the, reading about this guy that was uh, he was in a, a vintage toy business. Well, they came in and took all his vintage. You, you don't rebuild a business like that. He spent his whole life going around collecting vintage toys, and then one day his ship just got looted and burned to the ground, and like he's done, he's finished, and that's. Well, I come back, I said, I don't know if J Jacob used to do a nice job with the social media and the marketing and the SEO and stuff like that, um, you know, on a professional level, but as a kind of a, like sideline because he was busy with Hurricane. Right. So he had Danny at uh, Blackbeard. He was work. You know, he did a lot of work with him for years, you know, I can't remember right. what he charged per month. And it's not cheap, but hey, you only got to sell a couple plates to break even on that, you know, a few plates, maybe, maybe many plates a month, but... Usually, I mean, that's where I don't know why anyone would advertise on the radio, in the paper, or anything. Now it's just yeah, there's no way to track it. At least you put it on Facebook. You know, like for the two weeks of your first opening, it's everywhere. Like you cannot get away from a Facebook ad if you saturate it properly. Everyone right. doesn't matter if they're looking at a USA Today article or you know a, a St. Catharines. Don't read St. Catharines Standard. The Standard are it comes up. Like, and you can target the age, the demographic, the area. <laughs> for instance, I used to work for Remax Garden City, Wayne Quirk's office. And now his son, David, is doing the SEO. Well, Wayne's got this, Wayne's kind of a dinosaur from the, from the, from the, well, in a lot of ways he's, dead, but he, he's an older guy, right? So he, right. he doesn't have the charisma that comes through like a young model would, you know? And so David, can't convince him to hand it off to someone else, but he also couldn't convince him to do the digital marketing. He's always phone book cover, the back of the phone book, dude, phone book, oh, like, yeah. you know, stop it. And with, uh, now it doesn't matter what I'm, if I'm on Crowder's site on Facebook or whatever, there's Wayne Quirk, there's Remax Garden City. There he is again. There he is again. Just, you know, even if I click, I don't want to see this ad anymore. I'm not sure I have with Wayne. But you can't get away from it. And that's the one thing about the digital marketing is you could track it immediately. You can target the people you want, the income, the sex, whatever, their marital status. I don't It's really focused. But, hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, so much room to grow there. And if you don't know what you're doing there, which I don't, you know, Jacob right. or someone like him, it's, you know, it's it's nothing to pay him a hundred bucks, you know, a month right. for a few months to get rolling and, and get the name out there. Because when you're new, man, it's... It's make it or break it. And I know that a guy like you is certainly going to have a lot of word of mouth business, right? Because yeah. like for me, what fills me up other than the kids is like music. So if I drop a theater, Chris, uh, I went up north with a couple of high school buddies of mine. And I brought, I only had a few desks in my car, so I brought them. Well, I put theater crisp in and Jimmy's, Jimmy reads like, dude, what's this? I go, theater Chris, you like it? Well, I... I got my vocal sample on one of the songs, so I really like that song. But it's one of their best songs too, right? So yeah. I'm really proud of it because I know these guys. Well, they wouldn't love it. They're like, hey, put it on again. Well, I'm fine with it because I love that album. When they'd never heard it before, I sent Jimmy home with the album. I'm like, dude, this was given to me at the premiere by the band. You can have it. Like it's That's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've got it on my computer. Uh, at least I think I do. If not, I'll buy it from iTunes again. But I was just like, to send him, I sent him home with Theater Crisp and Aaron Berger. Aaron Berger and Blue Stars, his new stuff. And he's just so talented. But for me, that gift of like, here's a song and a group that you can love for years, decades now. Like, that's my biggest gift. And then having guys in with you, you know, somebody saying, you know what? Thanks for that. I didn't know about that. And you changed my mind on this. That's great. And, uh, you know, you got to do it any way you know how and use your talents, right? But uh, your talents yeah. are obviously your self-expressions through food. And God bless you, man, because you <laughs> changed the way, you know, and you raised the standard for me on uh, on breakfast, right? So now, how come I can't remember that place on Victoria?